Remembered for contributing to the advancement of the country's constitutional democracy, Skweya practiced as an advocate in Durban from 1971 to 1996. He joined the bench as a judge in KwaZulu-Natal in 2001 and got appointed into the Constitutional Court in 2003, where he retired in 2014. At the time of his passing, President Jacob Zuma had appointed him as the Inspector of the Correctional Services in May. Justice Skweya survived by his wife and four children. Children. He was a legal eagle, a giant in the liberation struggle, a man who contributed immensely in the liberation of our country. He is well known as a lawyer and a, a judge, but what many people are, are not aware of that he was a staunch member of the ANC. He worked very closely with our president in the ANC in the early 70s and also with uh, the late uh, Griffiths and Victoria Mkang. So he's the man who we we, we, we lower our revolutionary banner in the recognition of his personal contribution, not only to law, but to politics in our country. And for me as an individual also, I worked very closely with him as a young article clerk here in Durban under Phyllis Naidu, Archie Kumete and later Ernest Mkun. He was one of those lawyers that we looked up to, as you know, that he was the first African to obtain silk. And that also on a personal level in 1986, when I had been sentenced to 10 years on Robben Island, he is the man who represented me before Richard Goldstone, and that sentence was reduced from 10 to 6 years. A neighbor, his chambers were close to mine. We spent time talking. I was struck by his humility, and I hasten to say that if there is anything most of us need to do, myself included, in memory of Butembi, it is to be more humble than we've ever been before. I hope to touch on his attribute, his role as a peacemaker. It's important because we need peace in South Africa we need peace in Africa, and we need peace in the global village. At the 90th birthday of Tatawal Tasisulu, this is what the first president of the Democratic Republic of South Africa, Tata Madiba, said. And I found his words to be just as applicable to this occasion. He said, what counts in life is not the mere fact that we have lived. It is what difference we have made to the lives of others that will determine the significance of the life we lead. He went on to say, death is something inevitable. When a man has done what he considers to be his duty to his people and his country, he can rest in peace. Zionist Christian Church.